in the mystical labyrinth known as the New York City subway, we encounter an unusual type of signal, called Tiber signals. These signals enforce train speeds through curves, grades, and places with horrible track quality. Unfortunately, these signals are placed all around the system, and some of them can unnecessarily slow your train down for seemingly no reason. So if you've ever been late to work or school because the train being slow, you can probably thank timer signals. This isn't the only thing that makes our train so slow sometimes, as there are a collection of issues that cause the speed limit of a line to be reduced. In this video, I'll be talking about the reasons trains get slowed down and how we can fix this issue. Around the globe and even in other cities in the United States, subway trains run at higher speeds. While our trains may top out at a leisurely 55 miles per hour, the trains in London can reach 62 miles per hour, Washington DC has trains that can reach 65 miles per hour, and even PATH aren't that far behind, hitting 60 miles per hour in some sections. This difference in speed isn't only present because of New York City's abundance of timer signals, while that is a major issue, a bigger one is that the majority of our trains have capped acceleration rates and top speeds. This means that the actual design top speed of a train is greater than its service speed. A big example of train speeds being capped come from our SME trains. Back in the prehistoric era known as the 1900s, these subway cars were equipped with a feature called field shunting. Field shunting basically increases a train's acceleration rate, allowing them to hit higher speeds faster than usual. This was removed due to numerous issues with the trains being too fast for our ancient signaling system to handle. This unfortunately means that today, if we were to re-enable field shunting on all of our legacy equipment, we would need to make modifications to the spacing of our signals, but I think that the benefit of a faster trip outweighs the negatives of modifying the signaling system. For the new tech trains that the younger generation loves so much, the process of increasing a train speed involves CBTC. CBTC, along with its multiple benefits on the signaling side of things, also unlocks a train's full potential. Acceleration rates and top speeds can be controlled on a CBTC track by a zone controller. This gives train operators commands like slow speeds, skip this stop, and others. The MTA must not be scared to allow trains to stretch their legs on reasonable stretches of track. The highest speed a train can hit on Queens Boulevard Express is currently 48 miles per hour, but the track can support 60 mile an hour travel. This isn't only present on Queens Boulevard, but also on the Flushing and Canarsie lines. Now of course, increasing train speeds doesn't only involve the trains themselves, but also the operations of them. Increasing the top speed of a train doesn't really do much when it can't even reach that speed in road service. So, this is where we get into the conversation of timer signals. Contrary to popular belief, these signals have been lurking in the subway shadows for decades, but it wasn't until the late 90s when a number of fatal subway accidents occurred that timer signals became more widespread. While timer signals do help increase safety by not allowing operators to take curves at dangerously high speeds in many parts of the system, their use is quite questionable. Take the southbound local track at 125th Street on the east side for instance. There is a grade timer that's supposed to be rated for 20 miles an hour at the center of the platform, but it clears at a pace that's slower than your grandmother's Sunday stroll. It clears well below 20 miles per hour, forcing trains to slow to a crawl when entering the station. There are many instances of this throughout the system, and these unnecessary timer signals can lower train speeds and subsequently lower the capacity of any given line. While the MTA is recalibrating many of our system's timer signals and increasing speeds system-wide, I do not think it is enough. Sure, some of the changes they've made do make trips a bit faster, like increasing some of the speeds of the switches on the Brighton line, but most of the changes are not even noticeable. They need to be more aggressive with removing unnecessary speed limits. Allow the 6 to reach its full potential on the Pelham Express line, maybe increase the speed through Homeboy Alley on 8th Avenue. Those would be changes that would actually be noticeable and make a difference in trip time.
Now, I'm all for giving our system a speed boost, but let's not turn it into Luna Park. I love it when an operator takes a curve like a pro, but when you're taking sharp switches at 25 miles per hour or more, we have an issue. There's a sweet spot between high speed train and I need a change of pants. We don't want passengers to feel uncomfortable or even scared. We need to strike a nice balance between speed, comfortability, and safety. Speeds should only be increased where it's safe to do so and won't scare a normal passenger into not wanting to take the subway again. Those are just some of my ideas for making our trains faster. Obviously, there are some other things that I didn't mention in this video, like changing the operating culture around a system and improving stop spacing, but you get the point. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to get more from Mystic Transit, like, subscribe, and consider supporting me via channel memberships or super thanks. Special thanks to Stuart Guberman for supporting me at the two Broadway tier and Damien's Transit and Health Bar videos for supporting me at the Train Operator tier.